Good morning, God's beloved. Welcome to worship at Heart of the Rockies Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. When we're able to gather in person, we do so on the northwest corner of LeMay and Trilby in Fort Collins, Colorado. Today is a special day because it's the day that when I say Christ is risen, you say Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Happy Easter, friends. We're so grateful that you're with us this morning, the day on the Christian calendar when we celebrate the power of resurrection. We do believe that our God is a God who redeems all things, and we're especially grateful for that truth in light of the past year we have lived together. Thank you for being part of our worship this morning. As you're preparing your heart and mind, we also invite you to grab whatever elements you'll use for communion. At Heart of the Rockies, we believe in an open table, which means that Jesus extends the invitation and all, truly all, are welcome. We'll bless those elements later in the service. Also grab a Bible if you have one handy. If not, there is an app for that. We like version. We invite you, if you enjoy engaging your hands when you're using your head and your heart, to print out our coloring sheet, which is included in our Saturday worship emails. And finally, we'll have a special time for our children this morning, and we'll announce it. Uh, it's coming right after the first song, uh, so that you have the opportunity to grab those who want to listen and bring them close. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us worship the risen Christ. Christ is risen. 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 Christ is risen! 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 Christ has risen! Christ is risen! Christ is risen! Christ has risen! Christ is 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 risen. 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 He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. One more time, really loud. Christ is risen. Yes. Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. Vainly they watch his 
Today is the day that we celebrate the mystery of Jesus dying and God making him alive again. Our scripture tells of the women going to the place where Jesus was buried. And when they got there, Jesus wasn't there. I wonder how they felt. Then they found out that Jesus was alive. I wonder how they felt then, knowing that someone they loved very much was alive. Hmm. We may not know anyone right now who God has made alive again, but we know of other things that is like resurrection, is like coming back to life. We know the changing of the seasons, 
winter coming back to spring, we can see a rainbow after a, a storm. Hmm. We can see how a seed changes into a plant, flower, or food. I wonder if you can think of other things that remind you of resurrection in your own life. I'm so glad that we have reminders that even when it's hard, the sun still rises. Let's pray. Holy One, thank you for this mystery, for this mystery of Easter, of this time when Jesus was alive again. Thank you for all of these things in our lives that remind us of this mystery, for spring and for the sun and for love. Thank you for each person who is listening today. Bless them and keep them this week. Amen.
As we enter into a spirit of prayer, we invite you to share any prayer requests that you may have in the comments section. We'll pray for those requests throughout the week and we'll include them in our spoken prayers next Sunday. Throughout the season of Lent, we have been adding our prayers to our prayer wall, which forms the shape of an ampersand, representing the holy and in our lives. Today, on Easter Sunday, we're adding gold streamers to our wall, a reminder of the light that resurrection shines in our lives. As each prayer request is shared this morning, we will conclude with, Lord, you're invited to respond. Hear our prayer. Prayer requests. For Jean, who is receiving daily treatments for a sinus infection. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Deb, who just got a cancer diagnosis. Lord, hear our prayer. For people suffering from addictions. Lord, hear our prayer. Continue to pray for the family and the friends of victims of the Boulder shooting. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy One, had we been there that first Easter morning, it is likely that many of us would have been with the disciples, hiding out in fear, locked behind doors, alone with our thoughts in the upper room. We wish we could say that we would have gone with the women, that we would have been brave, and determined. We wish we could say that we would have held onto our faith, but the truth is we'll never know. What we do know is that you, Son Jesus, came back to all of us, not the few who had maintained faith or the few who had stayed with you until the end. He came back for the broken and the afraid, for the cowardly and the greedy, for the women in the garden and for the disciples hiding in the upper room. He came back for those who betrayed him and those who worshiped him. He came back for you and for me. Thanks God for loving us like that, for hearing us, for seeing us, and for forgiving us. No matter how lost we are in the night, day after day, sure as the sun rises, you find us and you love us back to life. May we bask in the warmth of a love like that on Easter Sunday and always. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Weak and wounded sinner, lost and left to die. Raise your head for love is passing by Come to Jesus Come to Jesus Come to Jesus And live Now your burden's lifted And carried far Precious blood has washed away the stain. So sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus and live. Like a newborn baby, don't be afraid to crawl. Remember when you walk, sometimes we fall. So fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus and live. Come to Jesus. 
Sometimes the way is lonely and steep and filled with pain. So if your sky is dark and pours the rain, then cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus. Would you join me in a word of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It's hard to write a sermon, any sermon, let alone an Easter sermon, after you've been to a funeral. Despite knowing that, I still sat down to watch Boulder Police Officer Eric Talley's funeral earlier this week on the day I had set aside for writing this sermon. You've been warned. Although I didn't know Officer Talley personally, I felt an affinity for him, not only because of his heroic acts the day of the shooting at the Boulder King Supers, now almost two weeks ago, but also because he was the community service officer who responded to a colleague's congregation after their worship service was Zoom bombed by someone shouting homophobic slurs early on in the pandemic. We adapted a lot of our protocol after that, I can assure you. With each word spoken and sung in this service, it became more and more clear who Officer Talley was as a person, as a dad to his seven kids, as a partner to his wife of 28 years, as a colleague to his fellow officers. As the service came to a close, his priest proclaimed that Eric's life wasn't taken. It was given in service to others. Thomas Long says that there are two preachers at every funeral. There's death, capital D, death, that loves to preach and never misses a service. Death's sermon is powerful, he says, and it's always the same. I win every time, I destroy loving relationships, I tear apart community, I dash all hope. It's a great privilege then of the funeral preacher, he writes, to shake a fist in the face of death, to proclaim again the triumph of Easter. Death, we reject your lies. Death, oh where is your victory? Death, oh where is your sting? Friends, we know death. Maybe we don't know someone who died from COVID or gun violence or the wrath of racism personally, but death is rarely just a friend of a friend. Death crowds in the room, occasionally welcomed, though rarely invited. Death shows its face in heart disease, in cancer, in old age, in brain disease, in suicide, in addiction, in violence, in divorce, and estrangement, and irreconcilable differences. Death comes to us whether we make our peace with it 
or not. Over the past year, we have had to confront death again and again. Perhaps it's fitting then that the lectionary gives us Mark's version of Jesus' resurrection this year. We're reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they, the women, went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The word of God for the people of God. And the people said, thanks be to God. Whew. In Mark's telling of that first Easter Sunday, we don't get any glimpses of the risen Christ. Peter and his comrades are nowhere to be seen. When a young man in a white robe tells Mary Magdalene and the women with her that Jesus has been raised from the dead, they don't jump for joy. Instead, Mark says, they are seized with alarm, with terror, with amazement. The angel's announcement of good news doesn't inspire belief or, or spark transformation or even bring just a little bit of comfort. It's not a preacher's sermon at a funeral. It's death's. There's no Easter proclamation, no soaring rhetoric that takes us from hopelessness to assurance. Now, there's no corpse, but there's also no living, breathing Jesus either. There's just fear, flight, and silence. It's no wonder some ancient scribes took it upon themselves to finish what Mark left as not only an empty tomb, but also a gaping wound. What appears in the long ending of Mark, seriously, go check it out in your Bible. You'll see what I mean. What appears in the longer ending of Mark is an amalgam of, of Easter stories featuring the resurrected Jesus. It's almost as if we can hear the scribes wondering, who in their right mind would write a gospel that ends with fearful silence? That doesn't sound like good news. And that's the literal definition of a gospel good news. But what we have to remember here is how Mark tells Jesus' story. Jesus has already promised his resurrection on more than one occasion, according to Mark. And Mark's Jesus is exceptionally faithful. He's always one step ahead of his followers' fears, 
always holding his friends together, always showing them the way back to Galilee. So yes, Mark does leave us with a little bit of a mystery, a death ritual and a dear relationship, both disrupted. And yet even though Mark is telling the story, we know who is writing the story. And as it turns out, the same God who authored Jesus' story is writing our story too. The same God who spun the light into day and the night into darkness, the same God who is in every sunrise, whether we are awake to see it for ourselves or not. Resurrection comes whether we can perceive it or receive it. Resurrection is God's oldest and most familiar plot line. And even so, it's one that never wears thin or feels cliche because God is always finding new ways to tell it. One of my college professors, Dr. Kanegi, was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at age 50. Leading up to it, 50 scared him for reasons he couldn't fully articulate. But once he got the news, he suddenly understood why he'd been feeling that way. Parkinson's sped up his life's trajectory, the way he planned for his future, the way he related to his family and friends. Everything was suddenly different in light of what he perceived as an early death sentence. All that changed when he and his wife took a trip from their home in Pennsylvania out here to Colorado and then on to the West Coast. They were visiting a Dale Chihuly exhibit in Seattle when he came across a story that transformed his perspective. Now, if you're not familiar with Dale Chihuly, he is most well known for his large-scale, color-rich glass sculptures. It's like um, the glass blowers in Estes Park, but on steroids. Seriously, magnificent stuff. When my professor learned about Dale Chihuly that day was that in a three-year period in the late 70s, not so long after Chihuly got his start in art, he lost sight in one eye following an automobile accident. And then, not long after that, he dislocated a shoulder in a body surfing accident. As a result, he had to give up the gaffer position for good. Well, the gaffer position is the posture that a glass blowing artist takes on when they're creating their work. And so Chihuly had to turn over this role to his students. So that his students would know what to do, Chihuly would first paint his visions. What that did was allow people to see what was in his heart and in his soul all along. Before people could only see the outcome, the finished work, but now they could see the artist for who he really was, for what was inside of him, not just for what he produced. Dr. Kanegi related so deeply with that aspect of Chihuly's story because Parkinson's was beginning to transform his relationship with his own students. Rather than just seeing him as an academic, they now saw him as a person. He couldn't hide his disease. Rather, he said, it became a tangible way for him to relate on a personal level to his students who, no doubt, he explained, had times when they were tremoring on the inside. It's just that his tremors were visible on the outside. 
stories of resurrection often catch us by surprise. And they always transform us. And yet the story of resurrection has never been our story to finish. It has always been God's story. Mark may have composed a gospel with a surprisingly open ending, but Jesus is the one waiting on the other side, ready to pull us through that opening so that we too can enter our own resurrection story. We might not always realize the resurrection that is unraveling around us. But rest assured, resurrection is the only story God knows how to write. I'm grateful for Mark's account of Jesus' resurrection. Because according to Mark, nobody actually saw the risen Christ that first Easter morning. The angel says, he's not here, not in the cemetery. Tell his disciples to go back to where he was doing his work. 
where he did his ministry. Tell them that they'll see him there, in the work he was doing, in the ministries they will continue in his name. They'll see evidence of his resurrection, new life and second chances, gifts of forgiveness, and the hard work of reconciliation. Again and again, they'll see Jesus. Here, for example, around this table, around your tables, not just in the bread and cup, but also in the work we do together in his name, caring, holding, building, saving, healing. Thanks, God, for the experiences of resurrection in this life as well as the next. We remember that it was on the night in which he was betrayed that Jesus took the bread there on the table and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Take and eat. In the same way after supper, he took the cup there on the table and he blessed it and he passed it to his disciples, saying, this is the cup of my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it, all of you, in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Holy One, we're grateful for all of the times and ways and places that you show up in our lives. Even though the tomb was empty that day, we trust that your presence was there. Because any time the word resurrection is spoken, we know that you have something to do with it. Might we taste a little bit of the sweetness and the joy of life redeemed and restored as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup today. Might each element that is blessed on the tables before us Bring us just a little bit closer to leaning into the mystery of resurrection, a story that we cannot fully know, but that we know we are part of just the same. Thanks, God, for inviting us in. In Jesus' name, amen. cut too deep and left you hurting and the future you had hoped for is now burning and the dreams you held so tight lost their meaning and you don't know if you'll ever find the healing you're gonna make it you're gonna There's a promise for the ones who just hold on. 
Last Easter Sunday was the first Sunday that we pre-recorded worship. The learning curve was steep, but here we are a year later, continuing to do what we have always done, which is to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. We could not have done it without you, church. It was a joy to gather this morning for sunrise worship, then to be in our parking lot together and shout our alleluias, and we're grateful to be with you right here, right now, because we know that God continues to show up for us in all times and in all places. And we see God's love made manifest through your generosity. Today, in addition to any gifts you may wish to give to further the mission and ministry of our congregation, you're invited to consider making a gift to our denomination, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, for this year's Easter offering. You'll hear more about that in just a moment. To give, you can go to our website, heartoftherockies.org slash give. In addition to the lines you'll see for our general fund and building reserve fund, you'll also see a line for the DMF Easter offering. You can also make a gift via text by texting the amount you would like to give to the number you see on your screen. Here's a word from our general church. Imagine what God can do, and how deep and wide it goes, when you support the Easter offering. I saw God's love go deep when the Higher Education Leadership Ministries went on a trip to Oakland last year, and a few friends and I stopped to walk around the store with a man who was living on the street, and we bought him what he said he needed, and just talking to him and being in direct contact like that is something I'm always going to remember. I've seen God's love go wide across the world. During this pandemic, Global Ministries partners are putting their faith in action, showing Christ's deep love even when resources are limited and pandemic numbers are high. I've seen God's love go wide through so many green chalice congregations across the United States and Canada, like Mission Hills Christian Church, who went carbon neutral by installing over 100 solar panels, planting over 50 trees on their property, and starting an organic community garden that is open to anyone. The Easter offering reaches deep and wide, developing disciples, forming new faith communities, 
connecting with ministry partners around the world, and serving the people of God. I've seen God's love go wide when executive leaders of our disciples-related health and social service ministries during an MBA peer learning and wellness group meeting shared stories of continuing to provide frontline care to the most vulnerable, even in the face of the pandemic. I've seen God's love go wide when our churches continue to feed the community during COVID-19 and financial ministries like the Credit Union of Park Manor persist despite economic challenges. So imagine, imagine what God can do, how deep and how wide it goes when you support the Easter special day offer. I don't know about you, but hearing the story of Jesus' resurrection, as mysterious, as unsettling, as, un as uncertain as it can feel, also brings me a little bit of peace, knowing that even 
in the darkest of nights, there does come joy in the morning. If you too have experienced some of this peace during worship today, we invite you to pass it on. Maybe you'll pass the peace to the folks you're worshiping with this morning. Peace. You could also send it out in a text, write a letter, make a phone call. We promise not only will the person on the receiving end experience that peace, you'll have a little bit more for yourself too. We hope you will worship with us again next Sunday at 10 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time as our youth lead us in worship. They have been preparing for the past several weeks, not only um, to share with you their theme, You Matter, but to tell the story of Jesus meeting the woman at the well. Our senior preachers are especially excited to share a good word with you. Check your inbox this week for more information about how you can be a part of the service at our youth's invitation. We'll begin a new sermon series on April 18th called The Parables of Jesus. We'll be exploring what we can learn from how Jesus taught by taking short stories, understanding them a little more clearly in the context in which Jesus spoke them, and figuring out what in the world they might have to say to our lives today. We hope you'll join us. You can always find more information on our website, heartoftherockies.org. We'd love to know that you are with us in worship today. Perhaps you'd like to share a confidential prayer request. Get signed up for our emailing list. Let us know you'd like to be baptized or become part of the community of faith that we share here in an official sort of way. In that case, heartoftherockies.org slash connect will get you to just where you need to be. Would you join me and many others in a good word for going? God be with, be with, us, with us this week. This week. We'll, we'll see you, see you in other faces, hear you, hear you in other voices, voices. Love, love you in loving, loving others, others, serve you in serving, in serving others. others. Not conformed to this world, but transformed by your love.